story came out just the other day uh, that said 40 children were arrested on suspicion of terrorist related activities over the past year let's find out exactly what that's all about professor roger thank you very much for joining us good morning it's my pleasure mike um one in six of those arrested were apparently aged 17 or under um this is a bit of a worry isn't it well it is a worry and it's part of a, a problem that it's very difficult for people to catch up with or make sense of mm. if you just look through the lens of the past uh things like extremism or or terrorism i mean uh, terrorism really started hitting the public imagination with obviously with 9-11 etc and al-qaeda was made sense because it had uh it had a leader and it had leaders um and it had young men but in their 20s and 30s carrying out attacks there was a international coordinated plots and uh cells etc but modern terrorism has you can compare it to a virus in the way that, that, that viruses mutate mm. according to the circumstances. And what's happened since the uh, early part of this century is that it, the internet and social media and uh, chat rooms and iPhones have had a massive impact on uh, how extremism operates. And I don't think many people of my generation, I'm pretty old, mm. they can really get a grip on just how much it's changed. No, quite. I mean, Home, of, Home Office data says that 46% of the total number arrested were white, 33% were Asian, 68% considered, considered themselves to be British. Um, and I wonder whether many of these people have been radicalised by individuals or whether they've been radicalised by what they've seen on the internet. Is it possible to know the answer to that? Well, yeah, there's a lot of really good work going on on radicalization. Unfortunately, the trouble is, if you ask academics about this sort of stuff, it's so complicated, it'll turn most viewers off. <laughs> but to, 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 especially early in the morning. But the, but the, the, what the point I'd like to make is that young people, just like my generation, but even more so if you're young now, you're in a bewildering world full of real and imagined mm. dangers. You've got wars going on, you've got climate crisis, there's uh, ideas in, in Britain that you'll never get a home, you're, you, you can't get job security, etc. Now those anxieties float around and what extremism does by definition, it gives you a narrative, it tells you what's wrong with the world and what to do about it. Mm. If you think of things like the QAnon conspiracy theory or the th conspiracy theory about the the deep state going on there's a brilliant bbc program called the coming storm all about that as i speak uh, it 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 looks ridiculous from the outside to uh, have some conspiracy about satanic uh, sexual exploits with bill clinton etc mm -hmm. but if you're searching for a simple story that makes sense of the world you can lock on to that and enter a sort of dangerous fantasy world which is fed and fueled by two things. One, by lots of other people who, who, who live out these fantasies in their heads online. But also there are agents out there. There are extremists trying to radicalize people. And this blend of deliberate radicalization and people looking to make sense of the world can create, fortunately, very rare, but enough incidents of young people uh, committing to a radical worldview that some as we saw with the taylor swift episode yeah. this summer that they actually turn their their fantasy a bit like the world of pornography they turn dangerous fantasies into a reality yeah. and you get the equivalent of rape or an attack but in the in the realm of politics right. so i'm afraid we really have to rethink what we mean by radical radicalization and what the threats are. Yes, and I suppose there might be even more of it going on that we know about, because these are just the people that they caught. These are just Absolutely. the people that they tracked. And I mean, yeah. I presume, I mean, given what goes on, um, you know, I've got teenage sons and, and, you know, I've got no idea most of the time what it is that they're looking at, because even if I try to, to monitor it in the house, you know, they're not always in the house. You know, they might well, be around at their friend's house. I don't know what their friends are telling them. I don't know what their friends, you know, we talk to them, obviously, and hopefully if you see any sign of anything terrible happening, you can avert it or, or make sure that they they know there's other truths out there as it were but you know most parents don't have a clue what their kids are up to yeah. well you've put your finger on a really important point that uh, I don't think people like to come to terms with just how much of 
human existence is lived out in a fantasy world. Yeah. I mean, I've got a teenage son who's now grown out of being a teenage son, but you, in a way, uh, what's really disturbing about the radicalization of young people is that in nearly every case, people have radicalized in plain sight with school teachers and friends and, and parents having really no idea until the actual act occurs. And, and this is really scary because it, it points to a, a problem that all parents have known throughout history is that we don't really know very much. It's a bit like the iceberg thing. So much of the iceberg of a personality mm. is under the water. But in a world absolutely flooded with really dangerous fantasies and hatreds, etc., then we've now got to really rethink the 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 way everybody on the front line of experience of young people and i'm talking about teachers and gps and pe but especially parents and friends have to be alerted to just what a normal phenomenon it is for a young person to have a perfectly normal looking life on the outside mm. but have, and this applies to things like suicide fantasies or misogyny or sexual fantasies i think we just have to really focus on the idea that what, when we say young people the, the word, the, any connotations of being naive or innocent or nice, etc., really have to be dropped and we have to be alerted without getting panicky about it, without starting to demonize young people, just to be aware of the fact that this is no longer an adult world in the hands of adults and adults have to grow up a, about their understanding of what it is to be young. Mm, absolutely right. Professor Roger Griffin, thank you very much indeed.